Good day or good night to everyone. I will talk about photonic reservoir computing for a high-speed neuromorphic computing applications. Let's start to look at a, a integrated silicon photonic uh, uh, circuit. Um, this chip here, and in particular this also this whole system that can be um, can be used to perform a certain task on an optical input. Uh, for example, if we have a, the optical input can be a telecom optical signal in, a, in an optical fiber and uh, maybe we want to, to perform some operation in real time at very high speed. Um, so we, we make this, we insert this optical input in this giant multipath interferometer where it can, it can be split and it can interfere with itself after some delay lines in different ways at each of this node and so uh, we can we can uh, read out this uh, this signal this overlapping or different of the same signal at different times uh, with the with the photodetectors and uh, we can apply a linear classifier or a linear machine learning regressor to this in order to to learn how to perform a certain um, a certain task on the optical input. But why is this chip needed here if we have already a machine learning uh, system at the readout? Let, before we see this, let's first see what can this system do. It can perform arbitrary Boolean calculations with memory on a bit stream. It can recognize arbitrary 5-bit headers at 12.5 gigabit per second. It can perform speech recognition of isolated digits and also nonlinear dispersion compensation in telecom links and you can train it to, to do other, other things of course. So let's see quickly the pros and cons. The advantages is that it, it is a multi-purpose, it provides multi-purpose uh, optical computing. It is easily scalable to high speeds. So if you decrease the length of these uh, delay lines, you can increase the, the speed at this uh, at which this uh, chip uh, can work and the only limitation is the modulation of the input and the detection of the of the signal of the electric signal at the output um, so it is also energy efficient because it's completely completely uh, passive and you don't have um, uh, power hungry um, in active components in the ch on the chip and uh, you have um, you can fabricate it with mature technology such as passive silicon photonics. The readout can be made all optical and integrated as well. We will see this. And then uh, you just need simple machine learning to, to, to work with this, um, with this technique. The disadvantages uh, is that uh, you have a limited computational power and memory uh, as compared to other more complicated, more powerful uh, machine learning implementations uh, and techniques such from uh, deep learning and such. And then also you have a large footprint on chip. But uh, the idea is that you can achieve high speed and efficiency when you apply this technique to tasks that are already in the optical domain, for example, telecom applications. But what is reservoir computing? So a machine learning, it is a machine learning approach to simplify the training of recurrent neural networks. So a recurrent neural network is something like this. You have neurons that perform, uh, in, like in an ordinary neural network, they perform a nonlinear uh, function of their input and they're connected with each other, with, connect, with links. Uh, and usually in a neural network, you, 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 you tune the strength of these links so that this network bec becomes learns how to carry out a certain task on the input. Uh, the recurrent neural network has recurrent uh, um, connections that can, that can make loops and uh, it works with time-dependent uh, input. But uh, and usually this, this kind of networks are difficult to train. So the reservoir computing trick is to, is to stop trying to train the connections in the recurrent uh, and dynamical system here. Uh, so all these connections are, are fixed and randomly chosen at the beginning. Uh, so basically this is just a nonlinear random dynamical network. It can be also a physical system. Um, and then you, you just um, excite this nonlinear 
a network uh, with a time dependent input and then you read out uh, some of the some of the state of the system so basically also the advantage is that you don't need full full uh, observability of this internal reservoir and you don't need full tunability of this network as you do with with uh, usually with neural networks the, you only need to train and to tune the the readout weights uh, which is a linear um, machine learning algorithm and it's much easier to, to train and also it, it is also much more computationally cheap than other uh, implementations. So the key ingredients for the system is nonlinearity. In this chip we don't have nonlinearity but we have it uh, when we detect uh, the, the optical sim signal and we transform it into an um, intensity signal in the um, in the electric domain and that's where the the necessary nonlinearity uh, lies and then um, we need also volatile memory here the volatile memory is given by the delay lines here on the chip and then complexity of course um, so but why does this work um, the idea the role the main role of the reservoir is just to um, map um, the time de a time dependent input to a higher dimensional space so that the linear uh, readout a linear classifier or regressor um, can be more proficiently used uh, on this um, yeah, can be applied in a more powerful way why why is this the case for example uh, let's say we have a, a two dimensional input here we have different samples that can be different input uh, uh, bit streams for example and we want to, uh, to classify to separate this from this class the red ones from the blue ones and in this input space you have to to mathematically um, separate these two classes using a very complicated and nonlinear um, decision boundary uh, while if you map it to if you map this input to a higher dimensional space let's, for example three dimensional space it is likely that that uh, you can maybe these two uh, classes they become linearly separable so you can separate with a, just an hyperplane and so you can and an hyperplane can be drawn by a linear classifier which is much easier to, to train and to use and it's less uh, computationally expensive as well so the, the reservoir makes the, the linear readout the linear classifier more powerful and um, let, let's see, for example, uh, a simple hardware implementation to grasp the concept better. So let's see, we want to, we throw pebbles or sometimes we throw grit in the air. We want to understand if we're, which one we're throwing with a, with a camera. So without uh, using this reservoir, the, a bucket of water, we should just uh, record this, uh, the, the, this, uh, objects passing through the camera and we need a very a very yeah um, a fast enough camera and the, the machine learning um, task can be complicated you might need to use uh, quite uh, advanced uh, machine learning uh, models to solve this classification but you can make everything much more much easier if you just use a, a bucket of water which is our reservoir in this case our hardware reservoir and we throw the pebbles at the grid in the bucket of water instead and uh, we we have all the time then to to record um the uh, the perturbation that this leaves on the sur on the wa water surface and then uh, we can just train um, a more sim a simpler classifier to distinguish between one kind of perturbation and the other since it's, it's usually a more simple um, and, and also a higher dimensional uh, type of uh, signal so um, but uh, this um, design that we saw can be also improved uh, in particular um, we can uh, we can uh, design and, and fabricate an all optical readout as you can see here, there is a null optical readout, and you just need to detect the signal with a photodetector on only one waveguide output waveguide here. So you just need only one <coughs> photodetector at the end of the reservoir. 
and uh, you can also lower the losses and the, uh, at the splitters and combiners here and you can reach higher speed uh, if you um, use uh, um, shorter delay lines <coughs> but uh, if you want to, to make an all optical readout you can use heaters for example for the modulation to, to implement the weights, the readout weights but uh, heaters continuously consume a lot of power so it's better to use uh, weighting elements like ferroelectric based on BTO or phase change material based weighting elements that they don't need uh, continuously uh, a continuous source of power uh, but in this case you might have uh, um, a limited resolution but uh, if you we have shown that uh, with a with a particular uh, training type of training of this readout you can uh, overcome the, the problems of uh, of a limited weight resolution and uh, yeah in this case the 3 bit uh, delayed XOR task is considered and you can see that you can get a classification error very similar to the ones when you get when you have full weight resolution so this the, the limited weight resolution is not an issue in this system <coughs> uh, an interesting um, an interesting implementation uh, of this server is nonlinear dispersion compensation at 32 gigabit per second. So let's have, let's let's consider um, a telecom link where you uh, where you have a, a telecom a high speed telecom signal um, and it it uh, it goes through a, a long fiber in this in this experiment in particular we have 25 kilometer fibers and after also uh, an, an amplification. You have that uh, because of the dispersion, the fiber you, your signal is distorted. So you would like to have open eyes. This is an open, um, an eye diagram. And if the signal has no error, you should have uh, these uh, uh, regions here without any signal. But uh, here you see that the, the eyes are completely closed. Um, so if you use um, a conventional electronic uh, equalizer, which is a linear equalizer, you can improve the signal a little bit but you cannot open the eyes you still have an error a uh, significant error on the on the transmission of these bits <coughs> um, so this proves that the, the, uh, the dispersion in this fiber is also non-linear because with a linear equalizer you cannot completely solve it but if we apply our reservoir computing system at the end of this telecom link you you can just uh, uh, have you can remove the nonlinear dispersion almost completely. You have, um, um, yeah, in this case, we had zero errors on all the, the stream length of um, more than 100,000 bits, and you have this open eyes uh, again here. So, another interesting thing is that you can um, solve a task simultaneously on two WDM channels, so at two different wavelengths. Um, and you don't need to, to consider two different uh, weights, uh, two different readout weights for the two wa um, wavelength, but with the same um, with the same weights you can uh, perform the, for example, the XOR uh, Boolean operation on on both uh, um, waveguides at the same time. And also you can extend the training to different operating conditions so that you can account for drifts in signal wavelength and temperature uh, so that to make the, the system more robust uh, more robust against uh, drifts but let's now have a look at a completely different uh, a kind of application which is uh, a label free flow cytometry so but we use the same concepts which is to exploit optical mixing and interference to reduce the computational cost of a machine learning um, operation that we want to perform so in this case we have a microfluidic channel and we make different class classes of cells or of particles flow into inside this microfluidic channel usually at high speed and then we have a, a, a laser that impinges on a pinhole usually uh, and then you you light the um, with this laser you you light the cell the, the flowing cell and you acquire a, a diffraction pattern 
uh, an interference pattern if you want that is can be called also a hologram and uh, and the idea for example if you want to, to perform uh, online cell sorting you want to to classify this hologram soon uh, quick enough so that the cell sorter knows where, where to sort these cells on time usually uh, in inline digital holographic microscopy you get you you acquire this hologram and you do inverse scattering to um, to to do image reconstruction basically uh, and then you can apply a machine learning classification algorithm uh, but this is way too computationally expensive usually because you want to perform the study on a lot of uh, cells and you want this system to have very high throughput so you usually can drop uh, image recon uh, reconstruction and just apply the machine learning classification on this raw hologram but even if you use conventional uh, image uh, classification algorithm uh, like based on convolutional neural networks for example these are usually too, still too compu computationally expensive for this kind of system so you really need something very very quick so some machine learning classifier that is very very cheap in computational terms so we we consider this very simple system which is just a laser a pinhole and a um, a, a micro channel where we make uh, two different uh, classes of particles of transparent micro particles flow uh, through and then we acquire the, the image and sometimes we we can also um, distort the the image that we, that we acquire with a diffraction grating so in this system we have no focusing system we don't have uh, lenses here that focus the the image of the um, of the particles so we get these raw holograms as you can see here this here uh, these gray ones are holograms after background subtraction um, we, all, we all also have a very large field of view indeed you can see here in the schematic that the field of view is much uh, larger than the particle size and if you if the particle is in the middle of the field of view you can get this very strong uh, pattern if the particle is at the border you have completely different pattern if it's outside you have very small um, particle pattern that you acquire and here is the um, co correspondent uh, pattern that you acquire when you also put the diffraction grating uh, and we can perform classification on both this um, these situations uh, in a very similar with very similar um, performance and of course uh, this system here has very cheap and simple components uh, we want also to stress that this is a quite a non-human friendly classification task as you can see the uh, the patterns from uh, different classes of particles are very similar and are difficult to to distinguish by naked eye <clears throat> um, so we perform uh, a classification pipeline that is similar to what we saw with the previous previously um, discussed uh, reservoir computing system um, so we acquire with an image sensor the the, in, the, the inter interference pattern projected by the cell <coughs> And this uh, and the the nonlinearity of our system and the the complexity of our system is given by the by this image sensor acquisition, and then we perform a background subtraction by by subtracting the previously acquired image. We apply a threshold to decide if there is a a simple uh, this is a simple uh, intensity threshold to decide if there was a um, a particle that was acquired in the in the image. And then we just apply a simple uh, linear classifier to, to the to the pixel values directly to the pixel values. So we just tra we just apply some weights to, to the pixel values and sum them and, and apply a threshold to decide which cl class the the particle uh, belong to. Um, so if we compare our classification system with others, uh, we have that. Uh, we yeah our system can can work uh, much faster than other works in literature can perform a single cl uh, particle classification in uh, in only 13 <coughs> microseconds um, while all the others the other comparable works uh, take much more time 
uh, and also we just use a, a normal laptop while the others use a GPU for acceler to accelerate the machine learning uh, algorithms. And um, yeah, and also we have a quite a large image, uh, a quite a quite large field of view, as we as we say it as well. So let's go, let's come to the conclusions. Um, we, we can say that reservoir computing is an interesting paradigm for uh, information processing in the optical domain. The strong points is that it is fast, energy efficient, simple, versatile, and multipurpose. Um, and we saw some applications, so Boolean calculations and header recognition on a bitstream, nonlinear dispersion compensation in telecom links, and also label free particle classification with a kind of a, spa, a spatial res, a version of the reservoir computing uh, method. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions,